so what I love about the work you guys do, you and Jeff, is, is this idea that anybody can be innovative. You don't have to be someone special born that way, like a Steve Jobs or a Jeff Bezos. But what, so what are, the, what are the key behaviors and, and, and how, do you, how do you become innovative if you're not instantly that way? Yeah, great question. So basically, we interviewed over 100 plus innovators and realized there were patterns in how they behave. Mm -hmm. So if you and I shadowed them and watched them for a day and just trailed them, we'd see them asking tons of provocative questions to push and challenge the status quo. Mm -hmm. We'd see them out there observing the world like anthropologists, think design thinkers going out and doing their sort of observational work. They talk to people who are just not like them. They don't think like them. They don't have experiences like them. They're very different perspectives. Mm -hmm. They're willing to try just about anything, experiment the heck out of the world. So they're always trying cheap, quick, fast experiments. And all of that behavior helps them to think differently. So when they have to combine things in new and creative different ways that nobody else has seen before, yeah. all of that homework, that work they do every day, helps them get these really disruptive insights. And how do they make sure that those idea, insights, because so anyone can have an idea, but how do you execute? How do you, how do you, are those people necessarily good at executing? So really there are two parts to that question. One piece is all ideas are not created equal. So if I've got somebody sitting in their office just being creative and coming up with some idea versus someone else who gets out of their office, does this active discovery work, you know, they're out there observing and talking and trying and experimenting, and they come up with an idea, that second person's idea is just better and less risky than the first person's. And that's sort of the energy that creates ideas that aren't just creative, but they actually make impact. Right. And the second part of that is all disruptive innovators, not all, but most disruptive innovators are not good executors. They don't have the behavioral skills or interest in getting things done the way someone who's just results focused and driven. Right. And so what we've noticed is, in general, these are teams of people who complement each other. And together, at the top and throughout an organization, they pull off great ideas and make them happen. What I love about the list, too, is, 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 um, is the, the names of companies. Because it's unlike, I haven't heard a lot of these companies. I've been doing this for a while. So even the top 10, there's this Brazilian cosmetics company called Natura. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that? Why are they ranked so highly? And, and, and how, do, how, does, how is cosmetics even on par with semiconductors and the internet, some in much faster paced industries? That's the same thing we noticed, Bruce, which is basically you've got a very diverse set of industries on this list. And it almost feels random. Mm -hmm. But when you poke inside of it, like in Natura Cosmeticos in Brazil, You've got this company where three people collaboratively run the top of that system. There are three co-CEOs. They're very different people, different skills, different backgrounds, different perspectives, and that diversity at the top enables them to not only pay attention to the bottom line, but they care deeply about the social and environmental impact of their work. Mm. And they get out and they employ and use their people to go into Brazil and beyond to source unique new natural products for their cosmetics, to respect the communities they get those products from and deliver it to consumers in a way that's valuable and exciting to them.